So just overall and where we stand. Well, overall where we stand, I think there, there are probably three dispositive trends, 10-year trends that are happening. One is we've seen a normalization of interest rates. You know, as you know, when I first got in the business and, and probably for most of my career, T-bills were four and a half or five percent. Now we've gone back to the normal. It's been, people don't realize it's been an anomaly that we've had such cheap money for 12 years. And that cheap money now has, has, has caused inflation. And, uh, and therefore, we're back up to normalized interest rates. But I, I don't think that is hugely concerning. We've operated in that environment, and that probably is better for the economy. So it's less speculative, less speculative deals. Kind of, we're back to the basics. Uh, the second thing that's happening is this China issue, where there's a decoupling. I think that is probably overrated as well because we're talking about five percent of the trade L last month. I think we had record trade with China, um, and uh, what we have to do is just pull back strategic things like chips. Of medical equipment, things we need to, we either need to friend shore or supply in America. And then the third trend, which I think is, is, is a little bit concerning with inflation, is the energy trans transformation from carbon to non carbon. That's going to take a lot longer than people are saying to get off uh, carbon fuels. We've got to recognize that and come up with a 30 year plan to do that in a, in a way that won't cause inflation, in a way that won't hurt the poor the worst. But those are the things that are weighing the market. And then, then the wild card really is this, the war in Ukraine and kind of global tensions, probably highest tensions since the, since the Cold War when we grew up. Yeah, let's, let's go through this piece by piece. Um, first of all, just the idea of the anomaly of cheap money. You're right, it may be an anomaly, but the whole market kind of um, got itself around that and maybe got addicted to some of that cheap money. Now that it's not here, even if it is back to basics, what does that mean just in terms of what people are willing to pay for things? Well, I think we're. I think we're. The market still hasn't capitulated to, to new valuations. Um, the very cheap money, uh, you know, had some. Every everyone thought that every company could be Uber or Amazon, and it turns out that, you know, 9,900 out of out of uh, 9,900 out of 100 weren't weren't Amazon. That you can't just buy market share with the weight of money and be successful. So, so so there were some winners, but that was a bad strategy overall, and that was driven by cheap money. So what what back to basics means is. You're going to have to invest in businesses that grow market share, that have new products, that have acquisitions, and that's kind of what Bain Capital does. So that, that's our fundamental principle. So it's kind of back to the future for us, and I think it's back to the future for the market. And the, and the market um, is is uh, has come down. Some some companies are still overvalued, but the market's at more reasonable levels than certainly it was, you know, two years ago. But when you say, did you say at the very beginning that the market has not capitulated completely, or did you say it has? It just it begs I, I the think, question whether think you think there's it, more pain. I think it's it. I think we're I think we're mid leap in it, and, and I think there probably is some more more pain to come. Uh, it takes a while for sellers to recognize that. So we're starting to see some more reasonable valuations in the private markets out there, or or public companies that are selling divisions. Uh, we've been at Bank Capital. We've been uh, reasonably conservative, and not not done deals at 30 times revenues or 20 times revenues because. We, we thought we thought something would happen. In fact, it happened a lot later than I thought it would, but but it finally has happened, and I think we're mid leap in that. I think we have have some more capitulation yet to come. Yeah, we've talked to um, David Rubenstein and some others in PE, and their sense of things are that it may take another year, year and a half before the private markets completely catch up, and the public markets too, with where valuations need to come. That buyers are still maybe looking for more than. Our sellers are probably looking for higher prices than buyers are willing to pay at that point. Would you agree with that? I, I would agree with that, although it, it differs. A lot of this issue was caused by the tech sector, and uh, and, and so so some of the valuations in industrial and non-tech and, and non are much more reasonable. Uh, so this was this is really a, a, a semi you know tech slash growth company um, uh, revaluation. And that, that, that is what's ongoing today. So we're actually looking at some properties that people wanted $900 million for a few years ago that they, they want $700 million for now. So there has been hmm. some, some definitely downward pressure on prices, but, but it hasn't fully happened yet. Steve, you pointed out that this transition to get away from carbon, um, carbon fuels is, is going to take a lot longer than some people think. There have been questions raised about financing for those projects, how it's become more difficult. Would, would Bain be in a position of wanting to put financing up for some of those some of those projects? We, we are actually, you know, looking at that, and, and there are many offshoots of the energy transformation, uh, uh, like uh, uh, high, uh, uh, hydrogen power, um, 
wind power. We were already in some wind companies, Japan Wind. So there's going to be major investment opportunities. I think the only way out of this is going to be some kind of technological change or more massive government support to make this transition. One of, one of those two things has to happen. We, we've only reduced carbon, uh, uh, non-carbon energy by like 7% in the last 20 years. So I don't know how people think in the next 10 years we're going to get down to zero. I, th I think it's going to be very tough. So I think governments around the world, uh, the next, the next uh, environmental forum, they've really got to talk about what's a real plan to get there and how do you get there and how do you yeah. support technologies to get there. But meaning, I think ultimately the answer will come from something we don't know about today, some kind of technology. But meaning the projects that are out there aren't profitable if governments don't heavily finance or heavily subsidize them. Yeah, the oil, oil prices are at a level where a lot of those projects are still not profitable. Um, so you're having, you're having to make an investment in the transition for the future.